Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Since Halloween is my favorite time of year, I thought I would share some of my own paranormal stories. Before I share, I would like to preface this by saying that while these are my own stories, some may be embellished, whether by the mind of a child or my own misremembering. However, they are my own experiences. This is made in good fun. So whether you believe in the supernatural or not, I suggest you grab your fun-sized candy bar of choice, sit back, and relax. To start us off, I'd like to talk about the brief experiences I had in my childhood home. The house I grew up in was never something I would have called spooky as a child. We lived in a rural neighborhood with a good amount of yard space for me to run around like a wild child was an excellent place to grow up. But like most children, of course I was afraid of our basement. It's a wonder what a child's mind can come up with in an environment that is, by its very nature, dark, cold, and unexplored. I often looked down into the main room from a small vent at the end of our hallway upstairs. Why, I'm not quite sure. However, I have memories of seeing shadows drift across the room as I watched, from the safety of that little upstairs vent. Of course, when I actually went down to the basement, I'd have to sprint back up the stairs as quickly as I could, so whatever lurked in those shadows wouldn't get me. When I was around seven, the most prominent incident from that house occurred. I was in our bathroom and the door was open onto the hallway so that you could see through the dark storage room next to it. I remember stopping what I was doing and looking out the bathroom door only to see a dark apparition in a cloak slowly move past the doorway. I remember crying to my mother, very distraught at what I had just seen. I described the apparition to her as being similar to the Grim Reaper but without the scythe. How I knew what a scythe was at that age, I'll never know. My mother, not quite knowing how to calm her hysteric child, assured me it was the Virgin Mary. However, I think even at that age, I knew the answer was bullshit, but it calmed me for the time being. I had a few more spooky incidents and memories in that house, not least of which my mother's old clown doll was surely the cause of. For years, I refused to sleep in my bedroom with it on the shelf. I had no problem sleeping alone, in fact, I much preferred it, but even after my father installed a dimmer switch in my bedroom, I didn't want to be alone in there at night. It didn't help that for my latter years living there, the window to my bedroom looked onto an unfinished extension, thereby negating any source of natural light. Unfortunately, as a child, even shadows cast by an old coat rack can be turned into something scary by way of imagination. I remember dreaming one time that my closet led up into a portal that could take me somewhere mystical. I tried to climb my shelves to get to it at one point before being stopped. There was nothing up there naturally, but apparently my mother's closet did hide the entrance to our attic, which I was always eager to see. Forbidden places are always the most tempting. Now, when I was around eight, my mother started working in an old hydroelectric power station from 1911 that got converted into a museum. It was well known amongst the tour guide staff that it was haunted, and fortunately, I got to spend a lot of time at that museum when it was closed. Looking back at my time spent in certain places, I can remember the feeling of them. Usually, I regard places from my youth with warmth and fondness. However, as I remember this place now, the feeling it gives me is akin to nausea, with a tight mass sitting at the base of my ribs. I enjoyed my time there greatly, however, I never quite felt alone amongst the empty halls. I often did odd jobs like cleaning for spare change or a candy bar from the concessions. Now, there's an area downstairs called History Hall and it's cited as one of the most haunted places in the building. It's a very long, narrow hallway with different inventions from years past on display. I would often be tasked with wiping down the laminated booklets when everyone else was on the main level. At one end of the hall, there's a turn that has a mirror to the right that faces you as you walk in, with a large area of wood paneling on the floor. Too many times I turned into that hallway only to do a double take back to the mirror, 
and I was sure I had seen something behind me in the reflection. The plank of wood also made very loud, distinct sounds as he walked across it that echoed down the rest of the hall. Both my mother and I, while down there alone, heard footsteps across that plank of wood that could not have been mistaken. History Hall unnerved me greatly, but I was never opposed to going down there despite the dread the entire bottom floor left in my stomach. However, there was one place in the museum that I outright refused to go, that being the elevator on the other end of History Hall. There were technically two elevators in the building, one being a decommissioned old shaft that was for display purposes. However, in this case, I'm referring to a more modern one, although even 12 years ago, it could hardly be considered that. It was slow, for only traveling between two levels, and it was not a smooth ride. Whenever I had to take this elevator, though I often avoided it in place of sprinting up the staircase, the feeling of anxiety and mild dread that the bottom floor gave me would be amplified into outright fear. In reality, I was in no danger, of course, even if it did get stuck as it tended to do. It was something about being in a closed space after walking through that hall, feeling watched from all sides, like whatever had been following me now had me well and truly alone. I would hold my breath until I got to the top floor where my mother and her co-workers were. Recently, I asked her about if she had any other experience while working there, and she did not disappoint. One time, she and her co-worker were alone upstairs, and all of a sudden the stall doors to the women's bathroom started slamming loudly. Another happened in an interactive section when one of the flyball governors started spinning, when no one was around to start it. As for more day-to-day -day instances of activity, she echoed mine and others' accounts of hearing whistling, singing, and seeing things just outside of her vision. She had a general uneasiness around the lower levels as well, particularly around a section of turbines where an accident had occurred. Given its spooky reputation, it was quite fitting that the museum would hold a yearly haunted house, which, personally, I always looked forward to. Teens from the local high school would volunteer there, and one year, I remember someone dressed up and stood stock still, posing as a static decoration in the elevator, waiting for a jump scare just as you were about to reach the lower level. Being so afraid of that elevator already, I did not appreciate the near heart attack. Speaking of the haunted house, the general area of History Hall was always the last spot on the tour, and by far made to be the scariest. Of course, the few times I did work the haunted house, I was stationed beside the mirror at the corner end of the hall. Somehow though, walking through that haunted house was always less unnerving than my normal visits. Perhaps because there were finally people flooding the lower levels. But after what I'd experienced there alone, not much could scare me on that tour. Apparently in 2014, it was voted the most haunted place in British Columbia by the Vancouver Paranormal Society, which I found out while researching. I'll leave some links in the description. There are records of people having heard voices, dogs barking, and seeing figures walking outside multi-story windows, just to name a few incidents. My mother's co-worker actually had that last one happen to him. Now, as I think everyone who enjoys ghost stories understands, most stories you encounter are just small incidents. Sometimes all that really happens is getting a feeling or seeing something out of the corner of your eye. My next few stories will be more of those incidents. So, to start us off, unfortunately, my childhood cat passed away back in 2013, about a year or so after we moved into this apartment. In 2019, we got my very special kitty boy, Theo, and having him around really just reminded me how much I missed having pets, since up until that time I was always surrounded by animals through my childhood. However, Something happened a few months back that led to a bit of confusion. My mother swore up and down that she had seen a cat run through our living room, but Theo hadn't moved from the spot underneath my desk in the office. I explained this to her and she was quite frazzled, naturally. She knew what she saw. 
What I hadn't mentioned to her before this is that I had been seeing this phantom cat for years. It happened rarely and was less noticeable after we got Theo, but occasionally I would get glimpses of it. Sometimes it was just glances and other times I would seem to imagine full images for half a second. While it's easy to pass these things off as the mind playing tricks, I enjoy the thought that sometimes my boy likes to check up on me still. Similarly, another instance happened last Christmas, although personally I don't think the two are related. Given the circumstances, it was my small family eating Christmas Eve dinner. I remember as we ate out of the corner of my eye, again, I thought I saw a cat jump onto a chair at the end of the table. And for about half an hour, it felt as if a man sat in that chair. It's a strange feeling when you feel so strongly a person's presence. I had half a mind to make an extra plate. Of course, I knew there was nothing there, but it was a strange feeling. Of course, I didn't mention anything at dinner, but on the ride home with my mom, I did bring it up. We both sort of just shrugged our shoulders at the matter, accounting it as just a weird feeling. But it was a strong enough feeling to the point where I can remember it almost a year later. Um, and when my grandfather passed recently, making that his last Christmas with us, the strange memory became even more potent given the association. Now, as I'm sure the skeptics in the audience are probably screaming at me right now, that could all be chalked up to my imagination. And to that I say, yeah, you're right, they probably are. So, I will share a couple stories that are most definitely just in my imagination because by its very nature, the mind comes up with some weird stuff. And some of my dreams have been just as spooky and out of the ordinary as my own paranormal experiences. Now, I've only had sleep paralysis a select number of times. Anyone who's had it can tell you it's never a fun experience. The first instance I remember was quite simple, really. I dreamt I was laying in bed in the morning and my door started to slowly open. I watched paralyzed as an unknown man stood in the doorway. I tried to struggle or scream, but I couldn't. It was one of the first instances I had, so when I finally broke free of it, I practically sprinted out of bed. My most recent sleep paralysis dream actually happened this summer during the heat wave. My room was dark and I faced towards my dresser as a woman with long, dripping wet black hair wailed in my face. I realized when I woke up, panting after the dream, that what I had been hearing was the fan I slept with blowing on me. I've never enjoyed sleeping with a fan. But unfortunately, I'm not blessed with AC, so I had to settle for ghost breath instead, it seems. The final dream that happened a couple months ago was not sleep paralysis, but even so, it unnerves me greatly given the implications. To give some context, back in 2014, a friend and I went to a park, and there I met a woman with two kids. I offered to babysit for her some time, since at this point I looked after a few kids on the side. We exchanged contacts, and that's all that ever came of it. I never spoke to her again. Babysat. Nothing. Fast forward to the present, and I had a dream about this woman, that she asked me to babysit because she was in trouble. I had spoken to this woman once in my life, and long since deleted her contact years ago. But somehow in this dream, I remembered her name. The dream itself is barely relevant, however, my brain conjured up this person I met only once, almost eight years ago, and proceeded to never think of again. I somehow remembered her name, because I know it was her name. I think it's interesting how our minds can remember things that we think are long gone. And with that, we've come to the end of our stories for this evening. 
I do have a few others, paranormal and otherwise, so if you did enjoy this video, perhaps consider leaving a like and a comment so that I'll know to make more in the future. If you do enjoy my content and want to see more too, then feel free to subscribe. I have some really interesting projects coming up that you won't want to miss. I'm really excited. Have a great day, everyone.